This is a great point to download the resources. So if you click there and you should be here at your first 3D app and download udemycargame.zip unzip it to a folder of your choice and in there you'll find two folders libs and rc time trial you're going to need a text editor I'm using brackets which you can get from brackets.io download the latest version and open brackets and choose open folder and point it at your the zip that you've just downloaded I'm developing several at the same time but yours should just have libs and RC time trial now if you expand the RC time trial folder and expand the v0 folder and let's just have a look at index.html the first thing it's going to do is set body to have a margin of 0 and a canvas to have a width of 100% and a height of 100% so if we add a canvas it's going to take over the whole of the screen that we've got available and then we're going to add the 3GS library which is included in the resources you've just created so it looks up a, up a folder up another folder and then looks in the libs folder so up a folder gets into the RC time trial up another folder and there's the libs folder and the libs folder you'll see that there's a 3.min.js so that's the minimized version of the 3GS library we now add in another file which is game.js that's one we're developing and we're adding another script which waits for all the DOM content to load and then creates a single instance of the game class and for debugging purposes so we can access this in the console we actually create window.game to be equal to game now let's have a look at the game class everything we do in this course is using ES6 which is at the time of writing the latest version of um, JavaScript um, and I'm quite partial to classes so I create a class for the game and a class has a constructor so this will every time you say new game the first thing it does is run this code here and that's going to create a scene this dot scene so the scene belongs to the game and it's going to be a new three dot scene so everything in the three library is prefixed by three the next thing we do is create a camera the camera is going to be a perspective camera so things in the distance are going to appear smaller on screen than things in the foreground it's got a angle of vision of 75 degrees and an aspect ratio that uses our window width divided by our window height the nearest point it can render is point 0.1 of a unit away from the camera and the furthest point it'll render is a thousand away from the camera depending on your geometry those numbers will change so we've created a scene and we've created a camera but at this point it won't do anything what we now need to do is create a renderer in this instance we're creating a WebGL render renderer WebGL allows us to to use the acceleration that's available to your device so it's going to be writing as quickly as possible the screen updates 
In an ideal world, that would be 60 times a second. Then it sets the size of our renderer to be the whole size of our window, width and height. And then of our, do our document, by the time the render is created, it's created a DOM element, which is actually a canvas. And we append that to our document body. OK, so we've created a scene, we've created a camera, and we've created a renderer. That's the minimum we need. But we also need to have something to render, because at the moment we've not really got anything to render. So we create the geometry of a box. That's going to be one unit wide, one unit high, and one unit deep. Let's pretend that they're meters, but they're really just an arbitrary arbitrary unit. And then we're going to create a light, which is a directional light. There are several different sorts of light available to you when you're using 3GS library. And the simplest form of light is a directional light that we just give a colour. If you're familiar with HTML, then you probably know that FF, FF, FF is the colour white. That gives the red value, that gives the green value, and that gives the blue value in hexadecimal. So hexadecimal has 16 different characters, whereas decimal has 10 characters. Hexadecimal, to carry on from the 9, has A, B, C, D, E and F. So, if you know your maths, that means it's working to base 16. And then we position our light. That allows us to have a target. So that's going to be pointing from 20 in the Y and 10 in the Z at the point 0, 0, 0. But we can set our target to, to anything, but in this instance, It'll just be the default of 0, 0, 0. We're adding an ambient light, which doesn't come from anywhere. That's the minimum light hitting any surface. And then we're creating a material. Now the material is a fong material. That means it takes into consideration the lighting. And that's the colour of it. Like a blue, quite a bright blue colour. And then we create a cube. So we've created the geometry and we've created a material, which is just blue. And the geometry is a cube, one in the x, y and z directions. And now we actually create the mesh that we can actually display. So that is the three dot mesh, which takes two parameters, the geometry we've created and the material we've created. And then we add that to our scene and we add our two lights. And then we position our camera so it's at three in the Z, looking directly down the Z axis by default. And then we start the animate function. The animate function uses request animation frame a JavaScript term that means you want it to render the next frame. And when it renders the next frame, this is what it's going to do. It's going to call game animate again. If we use this there, then it wouldn't know what that this referred to. So we have to set a constant game equals this. So that when we call this function, which previously knows nothing about the game, it will call game animate this method. And we're rotating the cube in the x and the y directions by a small amount. And then we're rendering the ultimate result. Now, if we go to Web Server for Chrome, 
and we go to RC time trial V0 then you see a rotating cube so you've just created your first 3D program it's quite a simple amount of code but there's an awful lot going on you've got a scene a camera a renderer a mesh that's got geometry and material and you've got lights and you're also call, calling repeatedly the same method by using the request animation frame which is part of what you'll be available to any browser hey that's great work this video is from the course create a 3d car racing game with 3gs and canon gs to get the course at a great discount, pull down the description.